The last chapter we will discuss this week is Chapter 5, Identifying Research Problems, Research Questions, and Hypotheses. Let's begin this chapter by reviewing some important terminology and distinctions and terms. Research, a research problem is an issue, difficulty, contradiction, or gap in knowledge that the researcher hopes to address. The problem statement is a statement of the research that gives an argument why the research is necessary. The statement of purpose summarizes the goal and the research question or questions is about specific queries the researcher wants to answer. In your textbook, Table 5.1 gives an example of chemotherapy. When you are revising your research or clinical question this week, I would suggest you use this table to walk through the research problem, statement of purpose, research question, and hypothesis. When you begin to develop a research problem, it is a creative process. In past semesters, I've chosen not to use rubrics because I fundamentally believe research is a creative process and a rubric tends to result in like things. In other words, people tell me what I want to hear. However, this semester I relented and provided a rubric that gives you some structure for your paper, which I hope we will take as a guide. You must free your creative mind to imagine a research problem that is consistent with your interest. For example, I provide a broad context of disaster nursing competence and education. But within that topic, you may choose to specifically imagine disaster nursing of pregnant women and some type of education. If you were developing a research study, you would then decide based on your research problem and available evidence whether the type of research problem you, you have uh, would best fit either qualitative or quantitative methods. When writing a research problem, it must clearly state what is problematic and what must be solved. When you're reading a journal article, you will generally find the problem statement early in the introduction. The research questions, purpose statement, and hypothesis generally appear later in the introduction or even in the last paragraph. When you write your problem statement, you want to identify what is problematic, what you need to fix, or why it isn't understood. A good problem statement generally has problem identification, background, scope of the problem, consequences of the problem, knowledge gaps, and a proposed solution. Begin by asking, what is wrong with the current nursing practice? What is the nature of the nursing problem? And what do you want to understand about it? Is it a big nursing problem? How many nurses or patients does it affect? What will it cost to fix the problem? What do you not know about the nursing problem? And finally, how will you st your study help to address and find a solution to this problem? When writing a purpose statement, researchers may use the terms such as aim, goal, and objectives. The purpose statement should indicate the population intervention, comparison, and outcomes. Thus, it addresses all of the PICO elements. Do you remember what PICO stands for? P is the population, I is the intervention, C is the comparison, and O is the outcome. In qualitative research, you may also see the terms explore, investigate, or describe to give context about the phenomenon of investigation. If it uses grounded theory, then you may see words such as understand or discuss. In qualitative research, the type of theoretical tradition may impact the research. Remember, 
Last week, we, dis we briefly touched on grounded theory, phenomenology, and ethnography. As a review, grounded theory may be interested in processes, social structures, and social interactions. Phenomenology may be more interested in experiences. And ethnography is more interested in culture. Another thing to think back to is remember in chapter one, we briefly discussed research questions. For review, see table 1.3. Research questions vary relating to the population and impact on the independent and defendant variable to be described. Um, it is the center of your research. Therefore, it's really important that you have a research question uh, that fits. You want it to be clear. It should be provide enough specifics that your audience can easily understand the purpose without any additional information. It should be focused so narrow enough it can be answered in, in the space that you're writing and the task that you are doing. It should be concise. So in other words, you want to use the fewest possible words. It should be complex. It should not be able to be answered by yes or no questions. And then arguable. It potentially, its potential answers are open to debate rather than accepted as fact. And then finally, the research hypothesis. Is your hypothesis based on your research on, the, on a topic? Can your hypothesis be tested? And does your hypothesis include independent and dependent variables? So just as a review, a research hypothesis is a statement of expected relationships between variables. Usually it states the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. The null hypothesis State, there is no states that there is no relationship between the independent and the dependent variables. And for a lot of us, this can be cute, confusing while we're getting used to it. But by the end of the semester, I hope it will seem natural.